Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and look up the price of the LLC and all that stuff and make sure all that's still the same. And then I'm gonna let you know something. Okay. Well, go ahead. You do that, and um, I gotta hop in a meeting and just let me know what you find out. All right, baby, love you. All right, love you too. All right, bye bye. Let me figure out. Let's see how to start. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, there it is, right there. Cool, bet. Okay, cool, legal zone. Okay, that's it. Let's see. No, no basic. 240 for that. 290. Okay, cool. Damn bad. That's, that's way cheaper than what I thought. It's about the same as last time. Yeah, about the same as last time. Man, what you think you're doing? Hey, huh? Hmm. Did you try this one before? I did try to start that last business. And that one did not go so matter of fact, let me, yeah, yeah, let me see. Yeah, let me see, cause it might be too many people doing that. Because if it's too many people doing it, that ain't gonna work. Let's see. How many people are in my area? Okay, okay. See? Just like last time. All right. Oversaturated. That's a lot. That might okay. That might just be okay. That just might be in my area. Let me look like because I mean everything online now anyway. Everything social media based. Let me see the website. Let me see. Let me see far as social. How many people? Period. Yeah. Let me look at that. How many people are? How to? Dang. Yep. See, oversaturated like we said. It might be oversaturated. I might be tripping. Man, what I'm doing? Cause they were having last time. Exactly. Man. If don't nobody know you, who who you who think I'm supposed to be? You ain't no way. Nobody. They don't finna. Don't ain't nobody know me, bro. Then if I do, do what you know about marketing anyway? Come on, think who, about it. Like who I'm supposed to market to? Like how? I don't even know how to market. Like, bro, what? Bro, what am I? I'm tripping. What's good, my beautiful people? Welcome back to the channel. Yes, you saw me with a load of lunch because the wife is out of town and I am daddy daycare this weekend and the kids and myself, we still need clean clothes. But anyway, I digress. So as you saw in the intro, today we're talking about limited beliefs. Now, what are limited beliefs, Lee? I'm glad you asked. Limited beliefs are those thoughts that arise that, that arrive that every time you decide you want to pursue something different or you want to achieve some growth or you want to advance in, in life, they are those thoughts that come up to try to tell you you can't do something, uh, you're not good enough, you're a failure, you don't know enough, stuff like that. The sole purpose of a limited belief is to hinder you. These are things that can keep you from pursuing better relationships or I do you want better on the flip side, they can keep you in a relationship that you know is unhealthy for you. They can be the thoughts that arise every time you decide you want to start a business or start a new business. They come and tell you, hey, you don't know anything about that. That market is oversaturated, blah, 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 blah. They are the thoughts, the false thoughts that arise in your head, that arrive in your head that keep you stagnant in one place and derail your growth. So today I'm gonna go over, you know, how to notice when, when, when you see them coming up. As well, I'm gonna go over some of the limited beliefs that I had to work through and some of the ones I still battle, battle through to a day-to-day -day basis right now. And as well, I'm gonna share with y'all some of the tips that, the tips that I use and some of the things that I do to help me press through the ones in the past and as well, like I said, battle and press through the ones I have on a day-to-day -day basis right now. And the thing is, I figure I share it with y'all because we're all human, none of us are perfect and for the most part, y'all, we all living the same life just on a different timeline. Believe it or not, just think about that. Let that sink in for a while. Exactly. So, but let me get on these clothes so me and my kids can have something to wear this weekend while mom is gone. And I'm gonna get back with y'all while I'm watching these clothes. I'm not done talking to y'all. I'm not done. All right, now guys, 
a lot of these limited beliefs that we have can stem from like past experiences trying certain things um like things i something like to call imposter syndrome which is a real thing by the way or like conversations from the past with some of our loved ones now when i say past experiences or things we didn't try let's say um you want to start you didn't create more time in your life and you want to start a clothing company and that's something you tried before but the last time you tried it it failed it failed miserably now with that being said you are always going to have that memory of that bad experience with that business so when you go into or you decide like hey i'm going to pick this back up i really love this brand or whatever it might be the thought process from the past experience is going to come in your head and be like man you know what you didn't try that before remember what happened last time that market is oversaturated it's too many people out there doing that you, how you think you're going to break into that market and do something and, and you know start a clothing brand and that right there is a limited belief that was brought on from a past bad experience or when I say imposter syndrome let's say you want to get into something like real estate or the stock market and so it's like when you get ready to jump into it you start having this belief of like man you don't know what you're doing it's pros out there it's veterans out there how you think you're gonna get in there and overshine these guys or how you think you're gonna carve your way in this market and you don't know anything about this about this market or what you're doing that's called imposter syndrome. It's like your brain, really that's your brain letting you know that simply you don't know enough. You don't know enough. And so since you don't know enough about whatever that thing is you're looking to dive into, imposter syndrome kicks in. Or when I'm speaking of like a past conversation with loved ones. When I speak about the conversation with loved ones, a lot of times we have people in our lives who are friends or people we're in relationship with, parents and stuff like that. A lot of times they can tell you, hey, I don't know about this, I don't know about, know about that. And sometimes it could, it could really be coming from a place of love. And in a situation like that, I feel like that's somebody else putting their limited belief on you and you internalizing it. And when I say it's coming from a place of love, it's just coming from a place of they're trying to protect you because they feel their brain is trying to protect them from thinking that they can do, you know, whatever it is you done told them they that you wanted to get into or you wanted to try. Or um or like when I say like friends, same thing with friends, but you gotta be careful with that one though because a lot of times too it could be coming from a place of jealousy where you're trying to be the friend or you're trying to be the family member that want to branch out and grow your wings and fly and leave the cuckoo's nest i like to say and they could be putting these thoughts in your head to hinder you because they want to keep you in the same boat with them you know the old crab in a bucket type mentality so be mindful of that last one be very mindful Alright guys, I'm just pulling up at Kroger. Gotta go do some grocery shopping too as well because like I told y'all, mom's out of town and guess what else we gotta do? We gotta eat. And it is always something going on at this Kroger. Always. I don't know why. But anyway, like I told y'all earlier, I have my own set of limited beliefs that I had to work through in the past and some, like I said, I'm still working through now. And one of the one of my major major ones from the past was me going through a divorce. And I don't know if any of y'all have ever been through a divorce before, but there is a lot that goes through your head, especially like for me. It was like fighting through the aspect of knowing that I wanted to eventually one day go and get remarried again and find that right special someone. But I at the time like i was struggling guys just feeling like i was just good enough you know like or struggling with the belief of feeling like can can you it's like can you really take care of a family are you really you know the type of guy that somebody would want to make their husband and the thing with me with my divorce i was with this person for like 10 years we were like the high school sweethearts or whatever you want to call it and all of that but you know, it, it is what it is. We we all know those stories. But I had to work through, like, the beliefs that of 
am I good enough or am I good enough to be somebody's husband? Can I provide a lifestyle that a woman would really be proud to say that I am her husband? And attached to that, like being a parent, being a dad, like not only do I have, you know, stepkids, like stepkids, and I'm a bonus dad, it's like we like to say in our house, or I just say I'm a dad. But me being a bonus dad to my stepkids, like, you know, working through the beliefs of am, am I doing the right thing? Am I being a, a good stepdad? Uh, am I being. Am I stepping in and being the dad that they need? Or is there a relationship there? Like, you know, these kids don't want no relationship with me, blah, 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 stuff like that. And not only that, me having a child from my past marriage and it being so much distance between me and her, where she's still in Mississippi and I'm here in Texas. Like me, I was fortunate to grow up with my dad in the home and I know how much that was a benefit for me. So with me struggling, feeling like, you know, I'm being inadequate as a father because there's so much distance between me and my daughter. Like that's a limited belief that I had, like, that I struggled with for a while in the past until like I had to come to the point to where I had to realize like you have to, I had to control the controllables, you know? And I had to make sure, you know, that I, I had to make sure that she knew no matter what, I'm here for you and I'm always here for you. And you know, that, that was a limiting belief for me, but let me get in here too. I got some, I got some more I want to tell y'all too, but let me get in here before it gets too packed because Kroger on a Friday is bananas. So guys, another one I had to work through is very much so with this YouTube channel. Now I'm sitting here filming in Kroger, but this is something I told myself at the beginning of the year, I was gonna start giving y'all new and better content. And in order to do that, I had to realize I had to look stupid talking to a camera in places in front of people. But that's okay, because I knew what the goal was and what the plan was. So I have decided like whether I'm gonna be okay looking stupid to give y'all good content, or whether I'm gonna stay in that bubble and give y'all whack content, and where am I looking stupid? So as you can see, you can see what the answer was. So you gotta push through. This is one that I'm pushing through now. And even with this one, guys, believe it or not, it's a lot of places, even in this age of social media that we go into, that still don't want you filming in their place of business. And you gotta respect that. And you gotta honor that. So if I can film there going forward, especially throughout the rest of this year, I'm gonna be filming there. I'm bringing y'all this content raw and uncooked however I see fit, and however, I guess you could say the place of business allowed me to, so. Here y'all go, y'all got it. All right, y'all, just pulled up to the lake. Got two right there with the tackle box. Hey, y'all, I just recorded a whole little segment at the house for y'all, and didn't even realize I ain't even had a mic hooked up at all. I just left the gym, so I'm kind of tired, but let me get out here and get set up so we can get to fishing. I'll be right back. All right, y'all, we finally been made it out here. Got loaded up. I'm trying to go down some more so you won't catch a hook in my mouth. I'm trying to teach you how to fish, y'all. All right, back to what I was saying, y'all. <laughs> Somebody got they, uh, they reel all tangled up, and now I got to fix it here in a second. But yeah, like I was saying, y'all, you got to make sure you put fear in its proper place. And like I said, I like to give it the acronym of false evidence appearing real. Because a lot of times the stuff that we fear or a lot of times the stuff that give us like those limited beliefs when it comes from fear, you're fearing something that hasn't even happened yet. So if it hasn't happened, that makes it not a fact. And if it's not a fact, it's false. You basically are being psyched out by your imagination. So make sure you Use your imagination to motivate you, not to scare you out. Your imagination should be one of your main motivators, not one of the main things that stop you from, you know, achieving your goals or even trying for that matter. So, so like when it comes to when I was saying about like the, um, the imposter syndrome, when it comes to that, the imposter syndrome is basically Let's say you want to try something or you want to go into a certain business, a certain arena, 
a business or you want to start a YouTube channel or you want to do, you know, you want to start with fitness or something like that. You only have an imposter syndrome because you don't know enough about what you're trying to go into or what you're talking about. And the biggest thing to do to compete against that or to combat that is go do research. Set aside some time, like 30 minutes or an hour a day for the next month or two and go do research on what it is you're trying to do. You know, like don't, uh-oh, uh-oh. Don't just give up just because you feel like, man, people gonna, people gonna know I'm a faker or people gonna, people not gonna listen to me because I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, go learn about what you're talking about. Go be about what you're talking about. Don't let the fact that you don't know stop you from trying something or accomplishing something. It's a, a billion videos on YouTube and I'm pretty sure quite a few of them can teach you something about whatever it is, the arena or business or average, whatever it is you trying to, you need to learn. There's books, there's YouTube, there's all type of stuff to teach you. So go, go be a student of whatever it is you're trying to do. Now, when it comes to past experiences, the biggest thing I like to do is, I like to have the time, like a time of reflection. And when I say time of reflection is, what a lot of people don't do, if you had a, a failed business or you didn't try Whatever it is, if you had something to fail in the past, because I, I know I keep saying business because that's 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 what I'm into. But if you had something that you failed in the past, it's just like a like a like a test. If you're in school, you fail a test. The odds are, when you fail that test, go back and figure out why you failed that test, or go back and feel like that past thing you tried, why you didn't like what didn't work. Go think about what didn't work about it. Go do do some analysts. Like okay, well maybe. Let's say you tried to start a clothing company or something like that. Maybe you didn't do your proper research on what type of clothes are popular right now, especially if it's like an urban brand. Or maybe you need to go do some more market research on who you need to be marketing to or something like that. Like, go do some research and figure out what did you do wrong the last time? Go figure out what was working, what didn't work. And if nothing worked, just go blow the whole thing up and start from scratch. And then go back to what I just said. Go back to do some research. If you know you tried to start something, you didn't do no research and you just jumped off the jumped off the diving board and said, man, I'm finna do this. And you had no knowledge or no recollection on what you was doing. Don't let the fact that you failed in the past stop you from pursuing again because there was a reason you failed in the past. So Go sit down, go sub, sit back and do some self-assessment, self, do a self-assessment and figure out what it was that failed the first time and what worked. Because the odds are something worked, something worked for you in your favor. And the odds are if it, if it failed, it was something you did or didn't do that caused that failure. So go, go, do, go do the research, go do the self-analysis. Why you gotta hit me? Because, because you want to. Oh, okay then, all right, I understand. Now, when it comes to like the negative belief when it comes from like those who are close to us, my biggest thing, what I do is limit, like if it's somebody that, now if it's somebody like in your household or maybe like a parent or something like that, depending on the type of parent it is, limit that person's exposure to you. Like, the biggest thing I do, I stay away from all negativity. If I come to find out you're a negative person, and every every eight out of 10 words that come, really, for me, every three out of 10 words that come out your mouth are negative, I, I, I limit your access to me. Because sometimes, like I said earlier, you could have people that, that they're close to you and you see this person as a friend and they could downplay or talk down on whatever it is you want to try simply because you're trying to step out in faith and try something and they're too afraid to. And God forbid that what you do work and you end up leaving them behind. They can't take that. 
So a lot of times the people who are the people in your life that are telling you something ain't gonna work or you can't do this or man, I don't know about that. I don't know if that's gonna work. Like I told you, that's because they can't see themselves doing whatever it is that you wanna try. And like for me, I, I live according to this plan. God didn't give you the vision. He gave me the vision. And just because you can't see it, don't mean I can't do it. And the fact that you can't see it, that's understandable. Because God didn't give you the vision. He gave it to me. So, you know, when it comes to negative people around you, limit the access they have to you. And then if you know you have a negative friend or a negative family member, stop telling them what the hell it is you, you want to do, you want to try, or you're about to do. Keep it to yourself. Learn the spirit of, as my wife like to say, master the spirit of hush. Master the spirit of shut the H-E double hockey sticks up. It will save you in the long run. And sometimes it might save you some friendships. So y'all just, just think about that. Because, and so like, yeah, just, just, just think about that. Now let me get over here and fix little big fishing pole because she didn't wrap the pole all around. But I don't know. It's it's all screwed up, y'all. Let me go over and fix the dog. All right, guys. We just finished up fishing. We just pulled up here at the Circle K, aka Old School Kangaroo, and we finna get some. Well, I'm not finna get no slushy, but I'm finna get a little bit of slushy. But going back to what we were talking about. At the end of the day, guys, when it comes to your limited beliefs, you can't let your fear hinder you. Remember what I said. Right. False. What'd you say, baby? Right. right. Like y'all heard the baby. Hold on so y'all can hear. Matter of fact. What'd you say? Right. Right. Y'all heard the baby. You can't let your limited belief, the fear of your limited beliefs hinder you. False evidence appearing real. Remember that. And on top of that, like I said, when it comes to something that you want to try and you have no knowledge of that, go do your research. Take out 30 minutes to an hour a day. Go do your research on whatever that is. And don't let the don't let the old version of you hinder the new version of you or the version of you you're trying to become, you're in the process of becoming. Anybody can reinvent themselves. At the end of the day, don't let your limited beliefs stop you or hinder you from reinventing yourself. Don't let negative people in your life or negative people that you're surrounded by limit you as well. Don't let their words or their beliefs of themselves that they're trying to project onto you stop you from becoming a better you. You are the only one responsible for your growth. You are the only one that's in control of your growth. And at the end of the day, you are the only one that can hold you back. Don't let your mindset keep killing your future because you depending on you, the little people in your life, such as this little person right here in my life, they are depending on you. You got a wife, you got a husband, you got all these people in your life depending on you. You go be that one. You go be the one to break them chains. What's that, baby? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You go be the one to break them chains. You go be the one to make a difference. And you go be the one to change your last name. You yeah, got it? So as I say all the time, life is better when you're you. God love you. We love you. Y'all be blessed.